Hello, welcome back to We Met Behind the Castle. Today, we're going to talk about the confirmation that we got just last week from Universal Studios and Halloween Horror Nights. Halloween Horror Nights 32 is coming and coming quickly. We're going to start to see some of the props and sets start to pop up at Universal Studios over the next month or so, um, just based off of what we've seen in the past. We'll talk a little bit about what I saw when I was there um, over the weekend about Universal and Halloween Horror Nights, some of the merchandise, as well as something that has popped up in behind uh, the Fast and Furious uh, supercharged ride, which is, I think you've guessed it, uh, one of the Halloween Horror Nights tents. Um, so we'll get into that, and then I'll tell you about some tips and tricks that I have as far as going to Horror Nights, and it'll help you plan the uh, plan the event that you're going to, but also help you with managing maybe some fears or some questions that you have as far as the event's concerned. So let's get into it. Let's jump into Halloween Horror Nights 32. Just last week, we got confirmation that The Last of Us will be a house this year at Halloween Horror Nights 32. I'm really looking forward to this because I've fallen in love with the show. I have not played the video game, so I'm really excited to play that. It has been remastered for PlayStation, and it is only a PlayStation exclusive game. I think I might even go through and watch uh, the walkthrough of the actual Pittsburgh area, which is the area that's going to be featured in the actual Halloween Horror Nights um, haunted house this year for Halloween Horror Nights 32. Uh, there is the scene in which they're in, I think, what is the hotel basement, which is going to be obviously, I think, one that is used um, throughout the Halloween Horror Nights house. Um, I think that the storyline will follow pretty closely what we've seen if you've seen the Max show or HBO Max show, The Last of Us. But again, it is based off of the video game, so Ellie and Joel's story is a little different just based off of the actual video game itself and the story that it tells in the TV show. So if you are interested in seeing what this Halloween Horror Nights house might feature and what it might include, if you're looking to see what might be scary in this house, you can actually get a pretty good tell, I think, from watching a playthrough. So if you go to YouTube and you search a playthrough or walkthrough of the Pittsburgh area in The Last of Us, the first video game, you can actually uh, watch a walkthrough if you want to be spoiled a little bit on what you might be able to expect at this house this year at the event. So if you're interested in that, uh, I can definitely recommend going to YouTube uh, and watching those and kind of listening to people talk about the actual part of the video game that is going to be featured this year. But overall, I think this is a massive announcement. I think it's going to have to have another IP at Universal. I think they're going to have to have another IP at Universal for Halloween Horror Nights 32 because I think the line for this is going to be very long and I think they're going to have to have something to kind of counteract that. There's been rumors going around uh, over the last about, I don't know, a couple days that the Stranger Things house is getting closer and closer to being confirmed by Universal Studios. I don't know if that's accurate. I've just heard speculation from people that are pretty reliable as far as sources are concerned for Halloween Horror Nights. If Stranger Things does come for this event, it will be one of the biggest events that we have as far as intellectual properties are concerned. Then you've got the mix in of what sounds like is going to be Universal Monsters Paris, which will be a, a massive draw because of the different characters that could be included in this. I've heard the names of like Hunchback or Phantom of the Opera. So there are really good chances that we see some of these really famous characters, some iconic characters along with these IPs They've also rumored The Exorcist, um, so it really could be a top uh, heavy, as far as IP is concerned, event this year, which, you know, the, these these houses aren't typically my favorite. They're really nice if you like the show or the artist or whoever it might be. I think they're a lot of fun. I don't think they're the scariest houses. I don't think they're the best as far as storytelling. I think the actual best storytelling houses are actually the Universal Originals. So I'm really excited about seeing what they mix in with these IPs that they're bringing into this event. And I think we're going to get more announcements coming up soon where maybe a Megan, um, uh, I guess, scare zone could exist. They even talked about maybe the rumors of The Last of Us having different parts of the video game where it's more like The Walking Dead where they have multiple scare zones that include The Last of Us. There is. There's tons of speculation and I think this is the this is the most as far as IPs are concerned just because of how many movies are out right now or coming out during the event. I think that's why it's so top heavy as far as the rumors are concerned for the uh, intellectual properties. So really excited about The Last of Us but I, I think there are other ones coming down the road and the fact that The Last of Us and Chucky have been both announced and that they're both really popular TV shows or video games, and then if we got Stranger Things, this event will already be massive enough. And then some of the original houses that they've kind of rumored are definitely interesting uh, and I think would be a huge draw um, to this event. So 
I am really looking forward to this year's event. I'm looking forward to more announcements. I think we're going to get more as July comes around. That's when we should start to get announcements as far as frequent fear. Towards the end of July, I would think, is when we get those announcements because that's when that came last year. So, again, the annual pass or the season pass for Halloween Horror Nights is on the horizon. You've got more announcements coming. All the scare zones um, still to be announced. All the shows to be announced as well. Food options, drink options will be there at the parks as they start to put those out in, in those booths. I think it's one of my favorite times as far as theme park vlogging is concerned because there's so much anticipation and hype in behind it and everybody is so excited about this event every single year and they actually do a pretty good job of keeping it all under wraps uh, up until about the time where the event would start. Yes, the houses will be confirmed and those rumors do exist, but this is this is the fun of it, right? This is why we all gather for Halloween Horror Nights here in Orlando same thing in Hollywood. It's got such a massive following because of how good the events have been in the last couple of years. And I think it's just become one of the most popular events here, uh, at least in Florida. So I don't know. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm so glad that they're bringing The Last of Us. They finally did it. They finally locked in um, one of the most popular video games to ever uh, exist as far as um, action is concerned. So looking forward to it. Um, what do you guys think? Are you excited for The Last of Us house? Are you excited for all the merchandise that could be coming as far as Chucky, The Last of Us, maybe some Stranger Things things? Um, didn't mean to do that on purpose. Didn't do that on purpose, but I don't know. There's so many things that are going on right now as far as Universal is concerned, and just this event alone has me hyped. So of course, I thought we would jump in here to make this video a little bit longer and uh, worth a watch. I think we should jump into some of the tips and tricks that I have as far as Halloween Horror Nights. Now, these are my opinion, um, so somebody else might disagree with me on some of these things that I'm about to say, um, but this is just from what I've experienced over the last two years as Halloween Horror Nights has really picked up in popularity. It's become more crowded, and I think more crowded than ever. That's why they have more nights than they've ever had. Um, so I, I, I kind of want to tell you what I think uh, is the right way to kind of do this event. You don't have to follow everything that I say. You can disagree with some of the stuff that I say as well, but this is just what I found to be successful when I've gone over the last couple of years. Just as a disclosure, I have only been to Halloween Horror Nights 30 and 31, so you might say, hey, what do you know about Halloween Horror Nights? I've been going for 10 years and this isn't accurate, but from what I've experienced over the last couple of years, the number one thing that I would say as far as Horror Nights is concerned, and I think everybody will agree with me on this one, especially if uh, you've gone in the month of September, is that you need to go in the month of September as many times as you can and try to avoid waiting to go to the event until October, especially if, you brought, if you're buying a frequent, frequent fear pass or a day ticket, definitely try to go as much as you can or plan your trip to go in September. The nights are not nearly as crowded. It's about half the crowd that you'd see in October because I think people you know, are in the mindset of like, I don't wanna celebrate anything spooky or Halloween until October hits. And it helps out with the crowds tremendously. I am not somebody that thinks like that. As soon as September 1st hits, I would say even in the middle of August because Disney starts to put up their stuff. I am so into Halloween. I am so full-fledged into the fall season. I start watching the movies, ending summer out with some slasher movies. I love that. So uh, again, I, I, I'm in the I'm in the mindset of celebrate Halloween as soon as you can. I think it's more fun anyway, but September, um, even the first weekend, which is Labor Day here in the United States, which is a big holiday, all the schools around the area are off and a lot of the kids do go to this, go to this event. It's still pretty empty. Uh, we went last weekend, or sorry, we went last year on the first weekend and we actually bought the Express Pass. The price wasn't that bad for the Express Pass. It's still not. I looked at the price. I think it's like $130 right now for an Express Pass for the first weekend, which is not too bad if you're really looking to uh, get into all of the houses that first weekend, um, which was something that I wanted to do just because I created the content. So we bought that. In the first weekend, we got, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more with Express Pass, but in the first weekend, we got a uh, bang for our buck for the Express Pass because we went in September, because we were there when the crowds were lower. I highly, highly recommend if you're going to Halloween Horror Nights, if you're planning a day ticket to, you know, or one or two days to go and you're buying day tickets, definitely go in September. It's easily uh, the better month as far as Halloween Horror Nights is concerned. So let's talk about Express Pass because I think it's the next important thing that I really want to kind of just get off my chest because I think it's of value if you really, really want to get all the houses done and you don't want to be there all night. So 
We got there, I think it was like right around 7. Uh, we didn't get there for opening ceremonies. I think it was like 7, 7.30. It was pretty crowded as far as parking is concerned, and we'll talk a little bit about parking as well. But it was a little bit crowded, so we didn't get in until about 7.30, which was okay. We got our express pass. Uh, we went through all of the houses. We were out in about like 12, 12.30. So we were done uh, with the event before, you know, 1 or 2. And it does start to slow down at 1 or 2, so you could, we could have, backtracked and done the houses that we really enjoyed but we knew we were going to be coming back over the next coming uh, months so we didn't but we got all the houses done um in a pretty quick amount of time we did some merchandise uh like you know shopping and reveals and stuff like that for the vlog we ate some food we grabbed some drinks so we did get a ton done in that uh span of time for uh, of about i don't know it was about four and a half five hours and I feel like we got everything we needed to do. It was worth it. The Express Pass, just to experience the Express Pass as well, um, it, it's cut down on having to, to wait in line. I think the longest wait we had might have been Descendants of Destruction for some reason. Um, and it was, I don't know, it was like 20 minutes that we waited. And it seemed like it was the longest wait because I think it was a hyped up house. But for like the weekend, it was like a 10 minute wait. So again, it, it was worth the money and the time. And I know a lot of people that have used Express Pass and I think it is 100% worth it if you're willing to spend that money. Now it is quite a bit. It is $130 a person and up depending on the season. We found that it was worth it just to get through the houses that we really wanted to get through in that first weekend. Um, so if you have the means, definitely do it. I highly recommend Express Pass. If you're going, especially for just a day, just buy it. Um, you're going to get your money's worth. You're going to get through all the houses. You're going to have a blast. And honestly, I think it's one of the better things that I've purchased as far as an add-on um, to an event. So definitely recommend the Express Pass for Halloween Horror Nights. So let's shift to something I wasn't so much of a fan of, and we'll kind of shift back and forth, um, is obviously the parking. And there's no way around this, um, unless you do like the VIP package, um, or I think if you have the upper tier of the Halloween Horror Nights um, frequent fear passes, or if you have one of the, I think it's the top tier of the annual pass, which I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, but if you have the top tiers of, I think both of the annual passes, one for Horror Nights and one for actual parks and Universal Studios, um, if you have both of those, you can actually get VIP parking, which is great because you just drop off the, the car, they park it, you just go into the event and you're right there um, on that escalator. You go through security that's just a really short line um, because uh, you get limited at, or you get access to um, a security hub where there's only like one or two metal detectors and there's hardly anybody around except for the people parking in the VIP section. So I think parking, it we got there on opening night and from what I remember, I remember tweets at like, I think it was like 2.30, 3 o'clock where it was cars out all the way out onto like the I think it's Universal Boulevard all the way out almost to I-4 down I-4's ramp it was insane um but I think that was just to get into the to uh, one stay and scream and we'll talk about that too um but two I think it was also to try to get there early enough so you could park enjoy maybe some food um and people got in in a relatively uh, quick amount of time or short amount of time but it is a wait like it's a 20 or 30 i think some people even waited 45 minutes to get in through the parking turnstiles because everybody just kind of clogs in um especially that opening night and then as october goes on right at the beginning of when the event's starting right 6 30 or so um 5 6 o'clock 6 30 it's going to be so uh, congested in the parking garage it is difficult, and you have to have patience. Obviously, they're they're working their best um, to try to get people into the parking garage. But again, it's very difficult. There's tons of cars. There's people walking in and out of the parking garage. It's hard to kind of maneuver in between cars um, and people. And they're trying their best to park cars quickly enough, but people are walking in front of cars. So it, it is. It's a it's like a perfect storm of things happening right at that instant when people are trying to get in for ceremonies. Um, the opening ceremonies, which is like the opening ceremony when the characters come up to the fence and they just let everybody in and they all just disperse into the houses that they want to get into. Um, but parking can be a hindrance so make sure you plan ahead i would definitely try to get to at least where you would try to park by five o'clock just to be safe on that safe side 5 45 at the latest you might miss the opening ceremony so um and just know you have to walk all the way through so you have to go through the metal detector through the parking garage through the metal detectors through city walk all the way into universal into that massive line right now they only have one turnstile open i'm hoping they have them back up whenever we get to, or both of them back up when we get to Halloween Horror Nights. 
Um, I think they will, but there's a good chance that there, there might be some construction in around the turnstiles to get actually into the park, which could cause chaos and longer lines. So definitely plan ahead. You want to be there at least by five o'clock in the parking garage, I would think, um, or near the parking garage to really feel like you're going to get there for opening ceremonies. So a lot of people miss opening ceremonies the first night because of the congestion uh, in the parking lot. So, and they do start to get a little bit better as the nights go on because they have more practice getting all these cars in. Um, but it is, it is one massive uh, push of cars right into it, right at the beginning of the event. So definitely plan ahead if you're planning on parking at Universal Studios. I did want to mention Stay and Scream now. Stay and Scream is the ability if you have um, the uh, ticket where you bought it, the day ticket where you bought and you have the option of Stay and Scream so you get to stay in the park. Or if you have an annual pass, you actually get Stay and Scream with your annual pass. You get to stay in a zone um, for a line. So for instance, um, there's one that's usually in Springfield, which is the best one I think. And you get to stay in the park as they close it down and get rid of the day guest and start to move it over to Halloween Horror Nights at, right at five o'clock they'll close the park and then they'll start to kind of make that transition. But they typically will let you out then to get in line for the Halloween Horror Nights houses. And sometimes they open them early so you can get in. You can get like three houses done and like right before the event starts or right as the event starts. It's, it's incredible. It's a great idea. Uh, especially if you're going to do stand scream, go to the back of the park because people will go to the houses at the front to start, or they'll try to bustle it back that the back there. So by the time you're through the Halloween Horror Nights houses, you'll get at least two or three done before the massive crowds start to show up in those lines to make those wait times. So definitely recommend stay and scream. And again, there's different zones throughout the uh, park. Basically all you do is stand in line. The universal cast members will escort you to the house line. You'll get in line and then they'll start to open the houses as they have them ready for the event. Sometimes um, before opening or well before opening at 6:30. So again, Definitely recommend Stay and Scream if you have the chance to do so. One thing too, uh, I would definitely eat early and often. So uh, the reason why is as the night goes on, you're going to become uh, obviously tired and uh, hangry, or you might get to a point where you just don't want to um, I guess wait in line for food because as the night goes on it gets a little bit more crowded with the food lines because people start to get hungry midway through the event. So the quicker you can eat while everybody's bustling to the houses, especially as the event goes on and you've done houses, if you want to eat at Halloween Horror Nights, eat early like right away. Nobody's eating right away. So um, definitely head to uh, grab some food if you want. Some of the food booths are great now. So just grab the food before you even get into the, the houses lines. Especially if you've got if you've got Express Pass, just eat take a chill. Um, I think that's what we did. I can't remember if we did that the first night or the second time that we went, but we definitely ate early right when we got there. And then we went to the houses and it was great because you weren't hungry the rest of the night. You got to go through the houses, weren't worried about uh, grabbing food and standing in line and, and being tired or hangry. Um, so that was definitely worth it. Eat as soon as you can. And then another thing, hydrate. In, um, in September, it is extremely hot still. Definitely hydrate, bring water, bring water bottles um, because you can drink those. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't, they won't let you into the actual Halloween Horror Nights house unless you have like a closed cap bottle, um, I believe, I think. I'm trying to remember, I think you can have a bottle as long as it has a cap. Anything like an open drink or anything like that for the event, you can't bring it through the house. So definitely finish your food and drinks before you enter the Halloween Horror Nights house or they'll have you stand off to the side and let people in as you finish your food or beverage or you'll have to throw it away. So again, eat early, drink often, not alcohol. The alcohol there is very sugary, so just a fair warning. If you drink too, um, the sugar is more of what causes the headache rather than the actual drink itself. So just be aware of that bring water if you can um, and definitely hydrate as you go throughout the day or the night because um, standing in those lines with all those people and it's humid and it's hot and it's september and it rains quite a bit uh, it can be um, overwhelming uh, and it can really ruin a night if you become dehydrated and you can't enjoy the event if you stay on the sidewalks the scare actors are not allowed on the sidewalks they will not go on the sidewalks one i think it's just the safety of the performers they don't want to trip over the curbs Two, they want people to have the ability to go to this event and if they don't feel comfortable or do have some fears or phobias, 
they don't want people to be kind of trapped in because it, it will it traps you in once you get to a certain point you're trapped like you have to go through scare zones um and some people don't want to do that one of the things that i recommend stay on the sidewalk they won't come up on the sidewalk if you're up on the sidewalk and they're you know it, it, sometimes you might randomly get a scare actor that just is not really paying attention and gets on the sidewalk with you but for the most part i'd say about 100 percent of the time i've been on the side and they never come near me so that's one thing that you can do um it's definitely a way to kind of get you know dip your toe in the event and not actually have to deal with anything. Also, if you if you are scared, head into like Green Gods, like or sorry, not Green Gods, like Harry Potter in that area where back where Green Gods is because there's nobody in that part of the park. If you really have a phobia and you don't want to go through the houses and you you're going by yourself, you're going with a friend that's scared and doesn't want to do houses either, go back to Harry Potter or hang out like in places where the scare zones are not and it's a great night. I mean, you're going to get to ride rides um, I think they open um, some of the attractions, obviously, back in Harry Potter. I think Gringotts is still open, so you can ride the Harry Potter rides. You can go through the shops, eat some of the food back there, really enjoy it. Um, and while, you, you know, you might enjoy one house, like you might want to do Stranger Things or Last of Us, but then you're like, that's a little too much. I don't want to do any more. I just want to hang out and chill. Then go back to one of the part of the parks. There are tons of places throughout the parks where you can enjoy um, a nice, chill evening without having to deal with the scare actors. And then the houses, of course, you don't have to go then into them at all. So it really can be a chill experience. Maybe see where a scare zone is that you're not too freaked out by, and you can walk through it just perfectly fine without getting scared. But if you are afraid of, um, you know, creatures or something like that, and you have a phobia, and you don't want them to bother you, just stay on the sidewalk as close as you can to the buildings, and they will typically not bother you over there on that part of the actual uh, sidewalk itself. So that's just some tips if you're scared of the actual scare zones and the scare actors and anything that's going on with the event. SeaWorld does an option where they have like the lanyard. Universal does not. So if you are scared, they will not have anything to indicate to characters. Please don't scare me. Um, if you really are walking through a scare zone, you find yourself in a scare zone and you didn't know you were going to find yourself into one and you can't quite get out. It, the best thing, and this sounds weird, but the best thing you can do is act uninterested and like it's not going to scare you because nine times out of ten if you look like you're going to get scared or walk away or you're kind of hunched up next to somebody looking like you're going to scream or run they will come after you like they, they can sense that that's their whole point so uh if you have uh, a straight face put it on just walk straight ahead and act like they aren't going to bother you walk quickly and they won't um so that's my advice as far as like if you're in a scare zone you're stuck in a scare zone and you just want to get out definitely do that because uh you do have the opportunity to get away from them and not have them scare you it's it's a lot of standing and walking. Um, I can remember this about Halloween Horror Nights is that the backstage areas are massive at Universal and getting back to Halloween Horror Nights houses, I mean 10,000 steps is not unheard of. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of walking and standing. You don't get places to sit. The queue lines aren't anywhere where you can sit down. Like They don't have like concrete walls you can kind of sit on. They're metal bars, like they're metal um, like stanchions and like metal gates, and you can't sit down. So you are standing a ton, you're walking a lot, it's a lot on your feet, wear comfortable shoes, wear socks, bring an extra pair of socks because when it rains and your shoes get wet, bring an extra pair of shoes. I highly recommend taking care of your feet because it is a lot of walking, it's a lot of standing, and then you get in the houses, you're standing, you're walking, it is. It's it's an exhausting event, um, and that's why I say to hydrate is because you're all over the park. You're walking all over the park because the event doesn't take place in just one section. It's all over. So uh, I would definitely say wear comfortable shoes, wear some you know comfortable clothing. Another thing too is if you really don't, if you want to try to avoid as many scares too, try to wear black. Don't wear like a light color because you stand out. So. A lot of people wear black to the events and you blend in more. So in the scare zones, you're, you're kind of harder to see. Um, so if you're, if you are going to do that and then anything else that I can think of as far as like, maybe like bring sunscreen for the early parts of the day, cause the sun's still out and beating down on you in summer. Um, it's kind of like a summer sun still uh, early in September. October is beautiful time of year here in Orlando. It drops down to like 80. You might get some nights in the 70s and they're really beautiful. Um, but it's still very warm. And because it's so humid and muggy here in uh, Orlando, you do have some nights where you're still going to sweat a ton. So bringing an extra change of clothes or whatever it might be that you want if you're going to try to enjoy the event for the whole time, definitely do that. Another thing too, if you're going to stay uh, for the 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., like 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., that's a great time. Um, I think it's 2 a.m. So it might be, yeah, I think it's 2 a.m. Anyway, anything past midnight is great because the crowds start to die down tremendously. Um, people start to head out of the park around 1130. 
uh, midnight um, just to get out of the parks. So those are really good times to do the houses and they usually have lower wait times. So definitely if you can stick it out after midnight or go later in the day, so like head in and get there at 10 o'clock and then do the next two or three hours, whatever you want to do you're gonna see a decrease in wait times for the houses themselves. A couple more things, um, but if you see merchandise um, that you like or you want, buy it early. Don't wait, they will sell out and then they won't come back. <laughs> so buy the Tribute Store uh, shirts if you want them, buy the house shirts, buy any of the merchandise that you want for Chucky Last of Us. I just went to see the Last of Us merchandise um, and you can check out the last video that I dropped. Um, for Universal, where I went in and looked at the Universal merchandise uh, as far as Halloween Horror Nights is concerned. All of the, the See You in the Fog shirts, completely gone. Last of Us only had extra small and triple XL, so not that many sizes left. Um, and that was the only stuff that they had. So buy them in the morning when you get there, if you're still there in the morning. Buy them right when you get into the event and buy them the first couple of weeks of the event because there's a good chance if they run out of the merchandise, they're not bringing it back. So definitely buy it if you love it. Um, that's what uh, my recommendation with any of the theme parks really are. If you like it, buy it because it might not be here in a couple of weeks. So uh, I guess that's some advice as far as the merchandise side is concerned. Try the food at the food booths. Those are always really good and they're getting better at Universal of having really good food options. The drinks are, again, very sweet. So if you like sweet drinks, this might be your thing. They're very sugary, so uh, you know, mix in some water because they will give you headaches. Um, that's one thing that I noticed as far as their alcoholic beverages are concerned. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Do the VIP packages if you can. Do the behind the screams uh, tour, which is the tour of the three or six houses that you pick, that package as well. Do the stays at the hotels. Um, I think that's great because you can just leave, get on the boat, get back to your hotel. I think if you're doing Halloween Horror Nights and you can afford to swing that way um, with uh, staying at a hotel that night, not having to drive home or drive to your hotel in Orlando uh, is great. Just stay at one of the resorts and they usually have really good packages as far as Horror Nights and the hotels are concerned. So definitely check those out at the Universal uh, website, which I actually can link below. And I'll actually link the Halloween Horror Nights uh, webpage below as well. But overall, I think that's pretty much it as far as Halloween Horror Nights is concerned. Don't go alone. Um, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, I go alone all the time. It's a blast still. I don't mean anything by that. I just mean it's a lot of fun to go with friends. This is a really good social opportunity because you're always standing in line, having somebody to talk to, um, and they always say never go alone, but having your scream squad, as they call it, um, with you is a lot of fun. Obviously, I go alone quite often to Horror Nights, and it's still a blast. I get to do everything that I want to do, but then again, I love going with my friends as well and really enjoying the event. So. I don't know, it, this event is my favorite event. This is easily uh, one that I think is the most hyped and one that I love the most and one that I get most passionate about because of how good it has been when I've been there. Matthew uh, Hartgrove, which is my uh, roommate, I'm never calling Matthew, that was weird. Um, but Matt, he got me into this event and I've been on a cra crazy kick ever since. I can't get off of it. I love it so much. I've listened to all the podcasts, watch all the videos. Um, this is just, again, this is my favorite time of year here in Orlando, Halloween and Christmas time because of the parks. But this, this truly is, this has become my favorite event here in Orlando. So definitely check out Halloween Horror Nights if you're here in Orlando at Universal Studios. HHN 32 is getting ready to start. We've got Chucky, we've got The Last of Us. Sounds like Stranger Things is coming possibly. It's gonna be a massive event. In the comments below, what are you excited about? Are you excited about Chucky? Are you excited about The Last of Us? Are you excited about the, the the potential that could be a Stranger Things with Vecna? Are you excited about all the rumors that they have as far as maybe next year having Friday night, is it Five Nights at Freddy's? I think it's Five Nights at Freddy's. They're rumored that they're gonna have that at next year's event. Exorcism. Are you excited about this year's event where you might have some uh, legendary monsters in France? Like what, what are you excited about for this year's event? And then also, Every year it has similar things like the food booths and drinks and just hanging out with friends and the tribute store. What in other events, like past events and this year's events and the stuff that has become tradition at Halloween Horror Nights, what makes you excited? Is it the drinks? Is it the hanging out with friends? Is it the food? What is it about Halloween Horror Nights that makes it so special? Leave that in the comments below because I'm pretty sure people love to read that as well. And if you have any tips or tricks, leave that as well in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. We hope to see you guys in the next video and we hope to see you guys at Halloween Horror Nights.